All right, we are in the vehicle here. So this just came in like yesterday or today, or when did this come in? Do you even know? This morning. Oh, wow, okay, cool. So the gentleman here reached out to me and uh, he told me, he said, hey, when this thing comes in, I'll give you a call. So this is just so, you know, I have such, such technology cars. I mean, this is just so, um, the good old days. So now here, we are in H2. Okay, let's look at that little thing right there. So we're in the proper thing. Now, what's interesting, this doesn't have your auto, your auto zone. So you literally have to kind of fight this thing. A lot of people don't understand the auto zone air conditioning where you set it and it just does what it's supposed to do. So and that's an upgrade feature that a lot of people don't know. And so, you know, here's the push grease layer. Okay, so we got that, got this. And let's see here. All right, let's get her going. So this is my first, now I've had the limited. So I've had some Toyota limiteds, but never like this SR5 package. So, but I just got rid of my Pro. Let's just see kind of how she feels over that Pro. And that Pro is so cool because it just eats up the bumps. It has that really cool suspension under it. And so, but here's the thing with these Toyota 4Runners. Yeah, they're good. They get up the road. It's not like you're a real fast vehicle. But not, you know, respectable. It's not bad at all on that. And quiet. And I mean, just once again, this is a great overall, your station wagon, your cool looking station wagon. You know what I mean? <laughs> that should be the diplomatic way to say it, I guess. So, and it's got the true, I mean, what's interesting is, is this still built off like a truck frame? Is that right or wrong? Correct. Yeah. So that's what's so cool about the 4Runner. It still gives you kind of a manly feel. So when you drive this, you do still have that feel that you're driving like a real borderline truck. You know, you're not driving that to a crossover molded platform. So it has the characters of a truck in some ways on a mid-size or, you know, a smaller size truck frame. But also the vehicle is really proportioned pretty wide. So right now, I mean, this vehicle, you, you would you'd say to yourself, this is kind of a small platform vehicle, but now being in this vehicle, I don't feel like it's a cramped small car. And it actually feels like it's a bigger footprint than you would kind of tend to think. Looking at this from uh, a distance or walking up to it. So, so yeah, I mean, that's kind of surprising. And I've been driving my F-150 Lightning now for the last few days. So that thing's a rocket ship. And anytime I jump out of my electric vehicles and I kind of experience the uh, transition from that electric instant torque to the gas, which it's huge, it's a huge difference. Because you have just instantaneous. But obviously over here, you know, nice. And once again, it's it's the SR5 Twitter Forerunner. I think value-wise, I think it's a good package. But what's pretty incredible is where the inflation and the dynamics of these cars these days. I bought my 2018 Toyota Pro Cavalier that I ordered for $48,000. So today, like the white Pro that you have coming in, my guess would be, that's probably a $62,000 vehicle. 58 at least. What would you say? Um, I'm not 100% sure, but I can find out for you. Yeah, and the reason I bring that up is because it's just incredible how in five year, five model years, you're talking about a vehicle that I bought for $48,000, which is fully optioned out and all the little goodies. And the, the newer one, I mean, it has more technology in it and it has a roof rack on it. So there's, you know, it does have more features, but I would be willing to bet that, that it's a $14,000 difference in price in five years, which I would equate to close to $3,000 a year increment price increases. Is it 62 or 64? Um, I think it's popping up right now. Yeah, and so I'm just going off memory. I don't, I mean, I just, I haven't been fixated per se on the Forerunner, you know, to be up to speed on every aspect of the little details. But here we are on the open road. 600. 
I'm sorry? 62,600. Yes, yeah, so I was actually uh, right. So we're not on the open road. You know, once again, it's a great vehicle. I mean, this is really is. It's a fun vehicle, too. That's the thing about Toyota. Toyota really does radiate the fun factor in their vehicles because it's a smaller vehicle, but it's not like radically small. And that's what kind of gets these forerunners so much fun. It kind of kind of going through the corners and all. She's really handling the uh, the inertia of of the vehicle kind of going from side to side. So pretty impressive. I mean, very nice. Yeah, the challenge for me is what do I give up? <laughs> what do I add? Yikes, that's scary, right? Just add another car back to your fleet. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, yeah, I'm enjoying this. That's da that's dangerous. It really is uh, quite accommodating. And having the white, you know, interior or the white exterior, it's going to be a little more cooler of a vehicle. Over the, I've been buying a lot of black vehicles lately, so a little hot. And and just really incredible on how this platform and this product that I've been buying now for so many years. And what's really cool is back in like 19, I'm going to say 92, when they redesigned the Forerunner. From a good old boxy like two door package to the four door, I got I was I got one of those. I got it from Springfield Toyota. I was one of the first ones in the area. Got a black one, and so I just have been a four owner guy and a Toyota guy most of my life. So yeah, very nice. I mean, this really is a nice vehicle. But once again, what do I? This is where I have to put the thinking cap on. This is something my wife would enjoy. This is something my daughter would enjoy. This would be a great all around just kind of usability type of vehicle and over the road too i mean it really is and i'm kind of cutting a kind of little herd just to kind of feel the suspension you know and she's pretty taut it isn't like too squishy too wimpy so we're back here at the leesburg auto nation toyota and do i just park it right here this is good just pull her kind of straight in and yeah nice if i really got this vehicle i think though the but you know what just to be fun for the person I am, maybe I'd ride around with the uh, the stickers and put some flower power on it, you know? <laughs> I'd go, people I know would be like, what's going on, man? What are, you, what are you doing, right? Yeah, so I really like the wheels. I think the wheel, I really like the brass. We call them in the Dodge world, and I had these on my Hellcat Chargers. These are called the brass monkey wheels. So I don't know what Toyota calls those. I call them snowflakes. We call them what? Snowflakes. Snowflakes, all right. But but it's a brass color, you know, copper, whatever. Yeah, very cool. Very nice. It's a, I mean, it's a really is a nice vehicle. 2023, the 40th anniversary edition Toyota 4Runner. They're building 4,040 of them to do the 4040. And the availability on them, I don't know. I think the year is going to be love-hate. That's what I say. I think you're going to love this or you're going to just hate it. I don't think there's really going to be any in between. So where does this go? I don't know. We will talk off camera and see if something makes sense. So view of the 2023 Forerunner, the anniversary edition. Stay tuned.